interpretation of financial statement return on capital employed. Over the past couple of weeks, we've been talking about how to interpret financial statement. So we've spoken about gross profit margin. We've spoken about operating profit margin. Now, these two speak about how the business's revenue cover the cost of production or direct expenses and other expenses related to the business without interest and tax. So return on capital employed is a ratio that is used to ascertain the return a business makes or the revenue it generates using the capital that it has employed. One, it's a measure of how a business manages all the capital that it has employed. So when we talk about managers, how it uses the capital it has in working to generate returns or revenue. Then secondly, it tells the operating profit that a business has in relation to its capital. Thirdly, it tells potential investors whether the business is viable for them to come in. So fourthly, the return on capital employed tells the business's picture when compared to the rated average cost of capital. So simply put, the rated average cost of capital, it's the cost of a business receiving funds to run it. So when the business receives funds from the shareholders, how much it costs them in terms of dividend. When they receive from debt holders the interest, so with investors' interest. So when a business's return on capital employ is more than the weighted average cost of capital, it puts the business in a good light. It means that it will have extra money to invest back into the business. Then lastly, an ideal return on capital employed should be 15% as a thumbnail in the industry. Alternatively, the return on capital employed has to be measured year on year or compared to an industry player. Also, care must be taken when you are analyzing return on capital employed. It has to be done over a period of time for a reasonable analysis to be made because manipulations can be done within the short term to increase the return on capital employed, which doesn't occur well for the business. Now let's look at the formula for return on capital employed. So it is profit before interest and tax. Then we divide it by the capital employed. Then we multiply it by 100%. That will give us the percentage. Then we come to the breakdown. Capital employed is equity plus reserves plus non-current liability. In other words, the total equity session on the statement of financial position plus the non-current liability or long-term debt. Alternatively, the capital employed can be the total assets, less current liabilities. So the upper section of the statement of financial position, when you take out the current liabilities, it will give you the capital employed and it's supposed to amount to the formula up there. Okay. Let's look at how to analyze the return on capital employed. When you work it out and you compare to the prior years or a player in the industry and there is an increase the possible factors one there is an increase in the operating profit or the profit before interest and tax it can be due to a reduction in capital as we said earlier a reduction in capital can be a manipulative effect so care must be taken to analyze it well or measure it over a period of time because when you deliberately reduce capital it has effects capital is what the business is using to run So when you reduce it, it has a potential effect in the long run on the business's survival. Also, there can be both an increase in the profit before interest and tax or the operating profit and the capital. But the rate of increase in the operating profit is higher than the rate of increase in capital. If there is a reduction, the reduction in the capital employee is more than that of the operating profit. Now, when we come to the decrease, there is a decrease in the profit before interest and tax when the market is so competitive that the business has to reduce its profits okay or the expenses it incurred was so huge that it forced the operating profit to come down the analysis that we made with respect to the operating profit margin will come here whether it's an increase or decrease so, and secondly when there is an increase in capital let's test our understanding so we have an extra of a business statement of financial position as at 31st December 2021. So we have the asset column being the non-current asset for both years, the inventory, receivables, cash, giving the total asset column for 2021 to be 11,850 
and 7390 for 2020. We come to the equity and liability column. We have the share capital and reserves. We have the non-current liabilities. Then we have the current liabilities, giving the total which equals the upper column of 11,850 for 2021 and 7,390 for 2020. So if you look at this extract, when we move on to solve the return on capital employed, we're only going to concern ourselves with the share capital and reserve and the non-current liabilities, the addition of those two. Alternatively, we can pick the total asset column and less the current liabilities. The statement of profit or loss for the year ended 31st December 2021 has also been provided. So we have the revenue cost of sales for both years leading to a gross profit. We have distribution cost administrative expenses leading to an operating profit of $2,700 and $1,340 for 2021 and 2020 respectively. Then we have the finance cost leading to profits before taxation. We have the taxation which will lead to the profit after taxation. So we are going to calculate the return on capital employed for both years and as our comment. So when we come to the solution, we will just restate the formula which is profit before interest and tax divided by capital employed multiplied by 100%. So when we come to 2021, the return on capital employed will be 27.41%. That was arrived at by dividing the operating profit of $2,700 by the capital employed, 9850 multiplied by 100%. For 2020, the return on capital employed will be 23.67%. That was also achieved by dividing the operating profit for 2020, $1,340 by 5,660 multiplied by 100%. So here we see an increment from 2020 to 2021. Let's look at possible factors that led to that. We realized that there was a 101% increase in the operating profit moving from 2020 to 2021. But the movement or the increase in the capital employed was only 74%. Okay, so definitely the return on capital employed will increase. This trend must be studied over a period of 5 to 10 years, ideally for you to know whether there is no window dressing or manipulation to achieve a short-term increase which will affect the long-term viability of the business.